All right, today we do our revised third reading in William Gurnall's The Christian in Complete Armor. Let me start with a prayer. Praise the God and Father of our Lord, His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We beseech the Father for the glory of His beloved Son, Jesus, the Eternal Word, who became flesh to fill us with His Holy Spirit, to speak truth, to glorify Jesus, and to point to the Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Yeshua, and we love you, Holy Spirit. Guide me in all that I say and do today, and bless the hearts, minds, spirits, and souls of all who hear these words, and point them to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to step aside and let the scenery be the scenery. Today's reading, we're continuing in chapter 1. And um, we're, we're working on the first verse of what Grinnell referred to in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And Ephesians in chapter 10, or excuse me, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We've been talking about what it takes to be strong. The sources of Christian courage. If you intend to bear up courageously against the opposition on your march to heaven, your principles must be well fixed. Otherwise, your heart will be unstable, and an unstable heart is as weak as a house without girders. The first crosswind will blow it down. Two things are required to fix your principles. First, an established knowledge of God's truth. He who has only a nodding acquaintance with the king may easily be persuaded to change his allegiance or will at least try to remain neutral in the face of treason. Some professing Christians have only a passing acquaintance with the gospel. They can hardly give an account of what they hope for or whom they hope in. And if they have some principles they take kindly to, they are so unsettled that every wind blows them away like loose tiles from a housetop. When Satan buffets and temptation washes over you like a tidal wave, you must cling to God's truths. They are your shelter in every raging storm, but you must have them on hand ready to use. Do not wait until it is sinking to patch the boat. A feeble commitment has little hope of safety when caught in a tempest. While that flounders and drowns, holy determination, grounded in the word, will lift up its head like a rock in the midst of the highest waves. Scripture promises the people that do not know their God shall be strong and do exploits. That's Daniel 11:32. An angel told Daniel which men would stand up and be counted for God when tempted and persecuted by Antiochus. Some would be taken in by the bribery of corrupt men. Others would fall victim to intimidation and threats. But a few who are firmly grounded in the tenets of their faith would do great things for God. That is to say, so flattery, to, to flatteries they would be incorruptible and to power and force unconquerable. The second characteristic, the second source of Christian courage is a heart set in the right direction. Head knowledge of the things of Christ is not enough. This knowing Christ is primarily a matter of the heart. If your heart is not fixed on its purpose, your principles, as good as they may be, will hang loose and be of no more use in the heat of battle than an ill-strung bow. Half-hearted resolve will not venture much nor far for Christ nor will the heart with false motives. A hypocrite may show some strength of spirit for, movement, for the movement, but he will soon give up his profession when he is pinched on the toe where his corn is. In other words, when called to deny that which his evil, his evil heart coveted all along. Let me read that again. A hypocrite may show some strength of spirit for the moment, but he will soon give up his profession when he is pinched in the toe where his corn is. In other words, when called to deny that which his evil heart coveted all along. 
Uh, I think that's that's that that was kind of hard for me to understand. Let me let me try to rephrase it just a little bit. Um, he'll give up his profession when he's stressed, is what that's saying. Back to the reading. If you are a serious soldier, do not flirt with any of your desires that are beneath Christ and heaven. They will play the harlot and steal your heart. Consider Jehu. How correct? And Jehu was the uh, the soldier who became king of the northern kingdom that uh, he deposed Ahab, Ahab and Jezebel, um, and he became the ruler of the northern kingdom of Israel after Ahab. Uh, consider Jehu, how courageous and zealous he seemed in the beginning. Why then did his resolve fail him before his work was half done? Because his heart was never set on God alone. The very ambition that stirred up his zeal at first, in the end quenched and killed it. He compromised with evil men to reach his goal. Then when he gained the throne, he stared, dared not put God's plan into action for fear of provoking those same evil men and thereby losing his kingdom. That's Kings, 2 Kings 10, 31. In short, his heart was set on the world's pleasures more than God's favor. And that will be the end of our short reading for today. Uh, we'll be back and po we'll post this one and then try to post another one on Friday. Uh, I want to pray that, Father God, that those who heard this message today will uh, use it to strengthen their resolve and, and learn to put your full armor and, and to be a soldier for Christ. Uh, and I mentioned before, please hit the thumbs up. That will send this video to some other people. And if you'd like to subscribe, that I'd appreciate that. Subscribe and hit the notification button, notification bell, so that when I post these videos, you'll get a notification of that. So thank you and God bless, and we'll see you next time.